and we're live again. Good afternoon. There we go, you see. I had to have it absolutely perfect because we're going on the new website with this afterwards. So, if you are watching from the website, welcome to the website. We're filming this live through Facebook, as we do with most of our cookery shows live from Stepford. So who's with us today? I take it easiest there. She's not popped back up yet. Not no. popped back up, and Kyle was there. Kyle was there. So I'm gonna get some equipment out while I'm waiting for you all arriving. So I sort of need a queue of people. Hi, Jeremy. There. Who's just joined us? Jeremy. Which Jeremy? Our Jeremy. Our Jeremy from work. Oh, lovely, our barman, Jeremy. Hello, my darling, how are you? Steve. Seems so strange not seeing anybody. Easy is back on. Hi. Anthony's Hello. watching. Kyle's back which on. Which Anthony? You've got to tell me which Anthony. Anthony who comes in the pub. Right. Hi, Anthony, love. Because there's millions of Anthony's, millions of, you know, Tony's. Good afternoon, there's, Kyle. There's only one Kyle. Afternoon, Anita, love. Yes, easy. I can see your picture. Yeah. What picture? <laughs> That's why I know she's watching. Yeah, I can imagine. She said I'm here. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Right, well, today we're going to make raspberry scones. Um, and I have decided to do them because David and I have been following Slimming World. Um, I've got this little kick on doing reduced calorie and reduced fat. And let's face it, everybody's been in lockdown. Everybody's complaining they've gained weight. So I reworked an old recipe that I had to actually reduce all um, the fat content and everything. And if I just put my glasses on, I actually worked out the calorific content for you all. And each scone, these are what we're making by the way, I meant to show you. These are the raspberry scones with raspberries mm -hmm. running through the middle that you can have for breakfast or if you're not on a diet, there you go. As we open one, it's full of lovely soft fluffy raspberries. Um, I worked out the calorific content of them so that we could actually do it properly. And they are 72 calories each, which is less uh, than those hideous um, bar things that you buy, those, um, I can't say the brand name, you know the ones I mean, the diet bars that are 99 calories a bar that are about this big, they don't fill you and they're full of preservatives, these are not got any preservatives in. So you've got 72 calories per um, scone, you've got 2 grams of fat, 8 grams of carbohydrates and 1 gram of protein. So they're not high in protein but they, you know, they're low on everything else. So, what we're giggling at is, is there somebody asking questions? Easier things the fridge will look better in a different place. Yeah, it does shape. Yeah. <laughs> the other side. The other side, because it's now in the new place, because the kitchen's been redone since last time we were live. For those that have not seen it, I've had all the kitchen ripped out. And There's loads of people saying hello. Mini Diamond. Hi, Min. Um, Jeremy's Sam says hello. Hi, Sam. Gary Barlow. Hi, Gary. David Riley. Good afternoon, Mr. Riley. How are you? My friend David Riley, by the way, if you find him on Facebook, he bakes the most amazing, amazing birthday cakes to order. Um, and there will be a link to David's page on my new website, which launches this week. Okay? In, in the website's launching this week, but everything isn't on it yet. Okay. Which, Sue Clark. Hi, Sue. To, Hi, Sue. Sue did message me because she said her scones never rise, and these do rise. It's so easy. So let's go on with the recipe. Kyle said your hair is over. Thank you, Anita. Love. Over the wall, love. Thank you so much. <laughs> right then, this is an ounce recipe, not a cup recipe. Uh, so obviously you're gonna need some kitchen scales. So we're gonna start with a pound of self-raising flour, okay? One pound of self-raising flour. Hi, Mark in Nurka. Let's just weigh that. Hello to Nurka in Spain. Hola, como estas? We'll pop that back. And I'm going to need... Is it vegan? Uh, ...a food processor because... Easier one to know if it's vegan. Right, you can make these vegan. If you want them to be vegan, just use uh, vegan margarine and use... Uh, what's the other thing in it that wouldn't be make it vegan? And use vegan milk. Okay, that's that's the soy easiest, milk. Easiest alternative to use soy milk. Soy Thanks, milk. Dean. We've Dean got... said it's nice, nice of me to back, be back and hear my sexy voice. Oh, I'm lovely. We've got to step. I think he's on drugs. Some milk because we're using um, a, a fat-free milk. Okay, I, I to keep the calorie down. David, tell me type the name. But I have put. <laughs> <laughs> 
I put the name of it on the recipe list on Facebook. So we're going to put some of the fat-free milk, I would say about a quarter of a pint, okay, into a little jerk. Charles, good afternoon, Charles. Charles said, Nana looks very Raquel, not an um, economics teacher. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Right, and into the milk, you're going to need a tablespoon of white vinegar, okay? That will curdle the milk and it will create a um, buttermilk because obviously buttermilk is full fat and it's very, very difficult to get a fat-free buttermilk in the UK. Oh, okay, Dean, I know who you are now. Dean's Jackie G-Spot's brother. Oh, marvellous. Hi, Dean. And the easiest said, can you make them for her? I'll see if I've got the time, love. Right, we should plug that in. That should sour in a few seconds, okay? So into your food processor. If you want to do this by hand, uh, with rubbing the fat, it feel free. But I don't. I really can't be bothered. Thanks for all the compliments about the kitchen, guys. Oh, we have compliments about the There's kitchen. There's loads saying. I'm, I'm very lovely. thrilled with it. Very thrilled with it. It took a long, long time. Um, and it was going on Hi, during one of the most horrendous... Uh, months of our lives that we've lived. If you follow us on Facebook, you'll realise why, uh, which we're not going to go into at the moment. But all this was going on during that, and it was a nightmare with builders here and everything else. Oh, okay, Dean, is that correct? Apparently, you say Dean looks like a lesbian. Oh, do I? Oh, well. <laughs> Can you stop repeating things like that because this is going on a website? Well, shit, I'm reading well, you what don't is right. Repeat that. All right. Right then, okay, into this, uh, we're going to put four ounces of low fat spread okay I can't, again I can't, i'm not going to say the generic name um, you want a low fat margarine uh, the diet ones okay that's four ounces of that into there barry day likes the glasses oh thank you my darling you want a pinch of salt easier you borrowed it love and then we need into this this is what makes it different and makes them rise when sue my friend was saying hers don't rise i find that most modern uh, scone recipes don't rise properly because i just don't like what they do this recipe is a wartime recipe and it works perfectly every time so into that now we are going to put uh, one teaspoon of baking soda. So it's how Fanny Craddock on hers because it's wartime. Yeah. One teaspoon of baking soda and then two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Okay. Are you rusty? That goes in. Which rusty? Well, for, um, in, Hinges. Yeah. Hi, love. How are you? You all right, love? Right then, this is, uh, I've got to say the generic brand of this, it's granulated, well I can't, can I? It's a granulated um, calorie free sugar. It's not that sprinkle powder stuff, it's an actual granulated sugar, okay? Um, if you're having difficulty buying it, email me on Facebook or via the website and I'll tell you the brand name. But it's the granulated one and it needs to be that. The, the powdered stuff won't work, okay? And you need I to... Drive tablespoons. Thanks okay. Kyle. Good afternoon Clive love. Now whip the food processor off. Any questions while we're getting that going? Maggie Regan said she loves the glasses and the dark hair. Thank you Maggie. The hair's dark because I can't have my hair done with lockdown. So it's easier. Oh, Dean Clark said, you look fabulous and the kitchen is an American show house. Oh, thank you, Dean. Oh, thank you, Dean. That's very kind That's Dean from Spain, by the way. That's very nice of you, my darling. Right. I don't like, if you're going to use the food processor, I don't like to add fluid to the food processor, even if I'm making pastry. If you see all the videos, I like to tip it to a bowl and add the liquid manually. If I find if you put it into the food processor, it toughens the mixture um, and you can't quite judge it enough if you understand what I'm saying. Just leave all the washing up on the corner because Nicole's coming up later. Oh, okay. She'll clean it up. Right. So into this, we're going to start with our liquids. This needs to be, it's hard to say, sticky but not wet. Okay. If it's too dry, 
then it won't rise. So I've used a glass bowl so you can see it. I've got a feeling I've not actually put enough milk. Um, do you want to answer a question? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm Charles wants to know where did you get the baking soda and tartar jars from? The jars on there, uh, they were from a Chinese shop in uh, Benel Madina about 15 years ago. There you go, and they were a euro. The Both euro three. shop, Charles, not the Chinese shop. Yeah, well, they were Chinese shops. Well, yeah. They were all... Uh, you can't say that. Well, you do know. It was chi lovely Chinese people, and they all had lovely Chinese names, didn't What's they? What's cream of tartar, Kyle's asking? Cream of tartar is a raisin agent uh, that works to make things rise. It's a raisin agent, okay? You could buy it in tubs online, which I do. I buy it online in a large tub. Or in the supermarkets, it sends, tends to come in sachets, okay, on the baking, the baking section. So that is just right, okay? Flour your board, I have my trusty rollout mat for easy clean up. No, Sharon, I'll eat them, love, because they're um, like Slimming World ones, so. Yeah, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, these are low calorie, low fat, um, slimming dietary. I've not lost all this weight to put it back on. If you don't want to make them dietary, use ordinary sugar, use ordinary butter, okay? Uh, but they're still quite low because you've not got an awful lot of fat uh, in them anyway. Charles, they're all over Spain, so you probably have got one of those shops, love. Which one? Is this Charles? Yeah. In Spain? Yeah. Yes, darling, are you still in Benidorm or have you gone back or where are you? I can never catch up with you. Right, make sure your board is well floured so it doesn't stick. Well spotted, Mel. What? Watch that candle doesn't burn the worktop. No, it's not. It's got hours to go in it yet. Though. Hours to go. It's in a glass jar and it'd have a job. The worktop's marbled. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sonia. And to Sonia. Hi, Son. Right. Sort of packed out. Can you just use soda bread, bread flour, Sharon's asking? What's soda bread flour? I've never heard of soda bread flour. Is, there a, is it a particular I flour then? I need to just then? wash my hands a little bit because I'm getting a little bit over sticky. So, um, Is it a particular flour, yes, Sharon? It's self-raising flour that I'm using. It must be self-raising flour for this to work. It won't rise, will it? You know, it's, it's, it's pointless saying, can I use this and can I use that? Because then the recipe doesn't work. This is the whole point of the things I show you. If you follow it to the letter and use exactly what I'm using, it will work and it will come out the same as mine. Clive said it's good to see you back in the kitchen. Oh, it's good to be back, Clive. It's nice. Douglas likes your it's glasses. It's such a while. So many compliments about your glasses. Oh, thank you. I bought a whole range of glasses. And you're going to see lots and lots of different ones. Um, during the last lockdown period, I bought lots and lots of glasses. I had loads of prescription glasses done so that I've got them to match outfits. Okay? I know that sounds a bit mad. But I thought if I've got to wear glasses, I may as well good. These are raspberries. These are frozen raspberries. Uh, they're not fresh raspberries that are frozen. If you want to buy fresh raspberries and freeze them, cool. Um, I bought these from a supermarket, ready frozen in a Ziploc bag so I can use them as I go along. They have to be frozen. Do not use them from fresh for this recipe. It won't work. Okay. Sharon said that flower, uh, she said maybe you don't get it in England, the flower. Maybe it's something just in Spain. Well, I've never bothered. We didn't, didn't, reckon, didn't remember well, seeing I it in Spain, Spain either. for almost 20 years, darling, and I've never seen that flower ever. I only ever bought self-raising flour and plain flour in Spain. So, you're going to loosely scatter... Hi, Ailey. ...your raspberries over the top. Thank you, my love. Any big raspberries, just crush them out a little bit. Okay, I'll just don't, zoom in a little bit so you can see that there. Don't have them massive, okay? So you want it covered, but don't overload. If you overload, you'll make them wet, uh, I've got you too much fruit, and it won't rise. And then you see, if it's in a Ziploc bag, bang them back in the freezer, and you're away. Take one half over, and then one half over over again. Then oh, Sharon's in Northern Ireland. Manoeuvre. I apologise, I thought it was in Spain, love. <coughs> and then manoeuvre. I've never heard of uh, soda bread flour. I make soda bread, uh, Irish soda bread, but I just use bread flour or ordinary 
uh, plain flour. I've never used soda bread flour in my life, never heard of it, look. Uh, but it must be self-raising flour for this or it doesn't work. Okay. Scott said I'm waiting for the new, for the interior design classes next. Yeah, there's already videos. They will not be going onto Facebook. They will go onto my new website uh, where there's how to do's. There are how to do things on the way we've done the living room, the panelling. It shows David actually installing the panelling into the living room. So it's a goodie. And then later on, after we finish the baking, I'll, I'll sort of tell you things that's going to be on there. Keep this a bit floured, but don't let it dry out, okay? Hi, Julie. Now pat it out to... Barbie Pink said hello. Hi, Barbie. How are you, love? Pat it out to a, a rectangle, okay? As near to a rectangle as you can get. And... Maggie's asking, have you ever made soda bread in a microwave? She said it's brilliant. Never. And that I would be intrigued to do. I've never, ever done that. Well, we could with ours because it's a microwave and an oven, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, mine's an oven one. It's a combination So we could thing. do that, I suppose. Right, you're going to pat that out to a rectangle. And I would say that is about an inch, okay? About an inch thick. I'll just zoom in so they can see again. So if I sort of hold my finger on it. About the length of the nail. That, yeah, so it's, I'd say it's about an inch, okay? Then you are going to need, I didn't take a sharp knife out. Kitchen looks fabulous, Barbie said. Thank you, Barbie. We're going to cut these into squares. Over the years with this recipe, even before I was doing them low calorie, I discovered if you cut them with a cutter, it tends to push the fruit and distort them and they don't rise as much, you lose the layers. So I've discovered it's far easier. There will be a link, Stephen, to the website, don't worry. Yeah, there'll be a link to my website going on to Facebook this week, okay? Oh, thank you, Maggie. Maggie's going to send you the recipe. Thanks, Maggie. I'll look forward to that. Hi, Bethany. Bethany said to look fabulous, as bloody beautiful as usual, she said. Thank you, Bethany. That's very nice. She's seen, she seen her an hour ago, love. Yeah, with my rollers in running around looking aside. Okay, go. so out of that we've got uh, eight, no, we've got ten. It's made ten. Okay, so onto a baking sheet which I've lined up with baking parchment. around 20 minutes at 225 fan assisted oven. Sharon said they look lovely and they're not even cooked. <laughs> I'll rinse my hands. And I'll wash your hands. And then I can show you the finished product again to yeah. we before. So have we got any questions while I'm washing my hands? Steve said I hope you're both well. Yes, we're fine. Very good, thank you, Steve. Who's Which this? Steve was that, by that the way? Birkin. Oh, hi, Steve. I didn't even know you were there. See, David doesn't tell me when these certain people Sometimes are. they don't, for some reason, it doesn't show up if they're watching. They just appear with a, a nice message, but nothing mm. about me. Doesn't mean nothing about you. It's not about you. Hey, Felicia, darling. Felicia said, nice slippers. Hello, Flea. <laughs> That's my gorgeous drag daughter, Felicia. Yes, the slippers were a Christmas present from her. So, yes, they are beautiful. Mummy loves them. Can you see them? Are they on camera? Yes, they are, I think. There you go. Any live shows or question and answers coming up? Douglas is asking. Well, you've got one Sunday, haven't you? Yeah, well, I'll we'll tell talk everybody. about that in a bit. I'll tell everybody about that in a moment. Um, you could do, we'll do some questions after this, but um, we'll have, try and keep it to things that I'm not doing on Sunday. Because on Sunday, there is a link on my Facebook page to another page that you can go to and watch a live interview with me. I've um, been interviewed by, I think it's called Draglicious or... Sandra said, don't you brush them with egg or milk? Yes, Sandra, you do. And I've just forgot to do it. So thank you for reminding me that, Sandra. They are supposed to be brushed with a little bit of egg and milk. So what we shall do is... <laughs> 
That's me getting so excited, I forgot, and I've actually got the egg and milk ready. So what I will do Can't is Sandra. very, very quickly... Go and get the staff, love. Luckily, they've only just gone in the oven. Robert said he's too busy looking at the lush kitchen to pay attention to That's the recipe. That's right, we'll whip them out quick. And we will just whiz some egg. Oh! See, this proves that it is live. There you go. Fancy me forgetting that. Luckily they don't just got out of the oven. So I will start to talk to you. I can't see what's being said at the moment because as you've just heard, that's our doorbell going for the delivery once more. And David's had to run downstairs to get the delivery. So I said those go in the oven now for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, we're going to keep our eye on them. Don't walk away. The biggest thing I hate is people who cook and say, oh, it came out, it's burnt. It's usually because you put something in the oven and then just swanned off and gone and done something else. Or like that, the doorbell ringing. And you know, you can't. Don't leave baking on its own. Um, and follow the recipe exactly as I've told you and it will come out. We'll go over the uh, calorific content again. The each scone, which they're are the finished product. They're the ones I baked this morning. They freeze fabulously, by the way. Each one of them, these breakfast scones with, with raspberries in them, are 72 calories each, 2 grams of fat, 8 grams of carbohydrates, and 1 gram of protein. And if you think about it, at 72 calories per scone, it's less than those hideous bars that have got, um, you know, you know the ones I mean, these diet bars that are supposed to treat you to a cake and all the rest of it, and you can have for breakfast and... Uh, those packets of those hideous hard uh, biscuits that you get, the diet biscuits. You know all the ones I mean, I can't start saying Oh, you're funny, love. I can't, uh, I can't repeat that. And it's got, don't forget, it's these haven't got any preservatives in, where those things you buy um, in the supermarket are full of preservatives. Going to need a cooling rack when it's about the oven. So did I miss any questions while David ran to answer the door? I said it would be another delivery. No. Well done on losing weight. Thank you, Steve. He's so done so well. So well. He's lost far more than I have. One stone in six weeks. Yeah, that's, so that's absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't know how many pounds are in a stone. So, whatever they are. 14, isn't it? 14 pounds. So. 14 pounds. I'm not too sure. I can never work anything out like that, mate. What are you trying to say, Robert? It's my Birmingham accent. But he's lost far more than I have. I've only lost half. Steve stone, said you're so. looking fab. Who said? Stephen. Oh, thank you, Stephen. God bless you, my darling. I should put that over there. But I'm going to just remind everybody... Sharon said she starts to use a timer on her phone. What, yeah, have, I, I, what have I missed? Even, well, I'm talking about leaving the oven on its own. Sharon, oh, right. for one, I don't know how to set the timer. I've got kitchen timers that you wind and set, and I carry it around the house for me. But I'm still doing something else, so I tend to, if I'm baking... I tend to actually stay in the kitchen because 14, obviously your said. scent of smell is the best thing because you can smell if they're going over straight away. Um, I just don't agree with walking away and going and doing another job while you've got baking in the oven. A casserole, fair enough, that's an old day. Hi, Callum. So, hi, Callum, love. Sandra said she missed seeing us both. Oh, that's nice. Um, 14 in a stone, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, I have lost 11 pounds. I just don't constantly put my weight all over Facebook. <coughs> well, I do. Right. Um, don't forget on this Sunday, while well, I just remind you before we sit down for five minutes, um, this Sunday I'm being interviewed on another Facebook page, not via my page. You need to go to my page and see the advert with the link and click and like their page, and I will be on a live interview. Um, I think it's at 5 p.m., David? 6. 6, 6 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and I think the show is an hour and a half long and I'm being asked, bombarded with questions. And you can ask questions as well, I think, from all accounts. I think you tell them the question and they repeat it to me and they have questions for me as well. And it looks so cool because a lot of my friends have done it. Um, so that's why I agreed to do it. And it looked good. I'm going to sit down, David. So do you have to move your camera? If I must. Bear with me a minute, guys. Right, we're going to get a little bit of a shudder. Get a bit of a shake here because I've got to adjust my legs. Is that how's that, my love? 
Oh, there we go. There she that is. That best of sat down. So, as I said, don't forget to join me on Sunday for the question show and the chat show uh, via the other page. Go to my page and the link is on there. Do we have any other questions? There'll be no holding back, Dean, no. No, there'll be no holding back. It's no holds barred. I'm saying it the way it is. If you're easily offended, don't watch. If you don't like what I say, you just get over it. You know? Loving the new kitchen, Paul said. Thank you, Samantha, Paul. Samantha, great to have you back live. So do we have Good any... afternoon, the Dame. Good afternoon to the gorgeous Dame Tony DeBell. How are you, love? So I can't, Dave's just walked away to pour himself a coffee. I could have actually poured him one while I was over Well, there. you never asked. I didn't, darling, did I? I forgot. So, um, so my new website will launch this week, which is absolutely nothing to do with entertainment. My new website is, I'm going back to my first love of interior design. I don't know whether everybody knew that when I first um, sort of started out careers, I was a window dresser. Um, and then I moved on to interior design and I trained to be an interior designer for Laura Ashley on Regent Street in London, hence my obsession with Laura Ashley. Um, and then I became a florist as well and I was in the in-house florist for Next Stores in London. Um, so it was um, a great time in my life, even though I did cabaret in the evening, I worked during the day for a long time and I loved it. Anyway, so I'm going back to interior design. My new website is all about houses, about how I do things in our house, um, the transformation of the house, past houses we've lived in. Um, you are able to book me, because I've done two online consultations already, you're able to book me as an interior designer to design your house. It's all on there. There's everything you could think of. Um, and there will also be a for sale page where I am selling vintage linens, um, vintage or rational fabrics, <laughs> Plus new things, I'll be selling a fabulous range of candles, which are not available yet, um, which are absolutely breathtakingly stunning. And then there'll be various other things. Um, the selling page will be things that are in my house. Not, It's not like an open shop, in other words. Um, it will be things that are in my house. If I use it, then it will be for sale on there. Um, I'm not just selling generic items to basically build a shop up. Um, so it's going to be really good so you know in future if you want to so I really love that Terry where you got it from well you'll know because I'll be selling it <laughs> and that's where it's coming from so Charles said will you be doing a recipe for an Easter Simulator cake or is it in the Nana's recipe book I'd it's like to make something Eastery it's in the recipe book and I did I think I did Simulator cake on the show last year I think if I didn't, I might do Simnel Cake because we're going to try and get one a week in now or until um, lockdown is completely over. Uh, so I'll be back with you next week as well. So uh, Perfect camera work. Thank you, Philip. Hi, Terry and David. Your hair looks gorgeous. Fab kitchen. Thank you, Dot. Thanks, Dot. How are you, love? And thank you for all your kind messages, Dot. It's been so nice of you to sort of keep up with me. And Scott wants to know favourite thing to bake. Uh, favourite thing to bake? Well, honestly, to be truthful, scones, which I've just done, I love to do scones because it's so, as you've just seen, that is so quick and easy to do. Even though I've said they're freezeable, because they're low calorie, yeah, they're 70 odd calories per Did you shot. show them that? Yes, I've got... but don't eat, no, I've shown them, but don't eat all of them in one go, unless you want to do. And if you're not on a diet, just use ordinary fats um, and ordinary sugars, and then you're fine. Nice. Uh, it would be ordinary. If you're vegan, use vegan fats and vegan milks. Okay, and it makes the same thing. Uh, but scones, you see, that to me is a recipe. I make these if I'm not on a diet and they go in one go. I, I make sort of half the amount because it's so quick to make. I think they're nice and fresh, but they do they do freeze absolutely amazingly. And when I defrost them, I sort of defrost them the night before, ready for breakfast, and then I like to put them on a warm tray in the oven, not the microwave, in the oven on a very low light for just a couple of minutes, and it just warms through, giving that fresh bait. Um, feel again. How are you th feeling about things getting back to normal in the summer? That's a question from Callum. Oh, Callum, I, I, I don't know. I, is everybody else? I'm in two minds. I don't know whether it's going to go exactly according to plan that they're saying. Um, uh, some reason I think there's going to be a spanner in the work somewhere. Um, I think it's a very dangerous thing to be booking continental holidays at the moment. I really, really do. Uh, that's something we've not done. 
Um, we're going to wait till about June, July and see how the year's going and then we'll book to go somewhere. Um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit wary of what's going to happen. I'm not frightened wary, I've just got this feeling they're going to put us all back to normal and then overnight everything's going to go revert back again. I've just got this ultimate feeling. I hope not and I pray not. Um, but you know, nobody knows. Sue wants to know, so glad you're back in the kitchen. When are you going to do another lockdown diva show? Oh, well, I haven't planned we should a lockdown do. We diva should do. show, but we might try and get a show in before we reopen the pub. We'll, we'll try. Can't and... guarantee when, Sue. Yeah, we can't exactly guarantee, but we will try. We'll message you. It'll be on my Facebook page if we do. Easier said you're selling dirt and knickers and, <laughs> and mocking videos. What's she on about? No, I'm not easy. I don't believe her at all. <laughs> no, it's beautiful housewares. Good afternoon, Linda. Hi, Linda. Which Linda? From Blackpool. Linda Hudson. Yeah. Hi, Linda. How are you, madam? Do you know, Linda, I tried to tag you into this so you knew I was there. And um, I couldn't, for some reason, it wouldn't let me tag you. I'll tell everybody this. It's Linda Hudson, Linda from the Nolans, the wonderful and gorgeous Linda Nolan, absolutely stunning, who's got her own gin company now. So I'm surprised, Linda. You're obviously, um, so I want to start a vodka company as well for me. Um, so you've got to buy Linda's, Linda's gin. I want to stock it in the pub and everything. It looks amazing. And she's just the most amazing woman. Um, so there you go, little plug for your, uh, your gin company, my love. Dot said she's, there's no end to your diverse talents. You can turn your hand to anything while well impressed. Well, it's, it's not that it, I could turn my hand to things, uh, Dot. It's, it's, I have the age old saying, uh, you know, don't teach your nana to suck eggs, which is, mm -hmm. you know, my, my great grandma was an old Irish lady and she said that permanently. Um, but. I only can do things that I can do. I, I do believe you can learn yourself to do things uh, because I'm completely self-taught with baking because I, when, I, when I first met David, I could cook amazingly, but I couldn't bake. It was horrendous. Cakes used to come out like lead and, you know, I just couldn't do it. Um, and when we lived in Benidorm in Spain, it was difficult to actually get imported foods then. So David wanted certain things, so I learned myself how to bake them. So I'm going to check the oven. And then we'll go back to that of, of where uh, what you do and what you don't do. Let me just get a pot holder. Let me check. And they're perfect. There we go. Oh, I'll flip the oven off. Absolutely stunning. They've come out perfection. Put them on a cooling rack. Don't let them cool on this or they'll go soggy on the bottom. Now nobody can say that isn't nicer at 72 calories per skull than those hideous shop bought things. So I'm sorry, it's not. Um, the nicest way to do it if you are on a diet, obviously you're not going to start loading it with butter and cream. <laughs> Um, <coughs> if it's a breakfast gone at breakfast time I would just have it as it is with coffee um, or I would use a low very low sugar jam or something like that but they are beautiful okay so that's the easier first so to go back to what we were saying no um, I, I don't I, I can't turn my hand to anything um, when we do things like in the house like with the new design projects on um, the new website it isn't me doing the work because I can't physically do it. I can't even sew a button on, you know. I can tell you how it's meant to be done and then I have to get somebody to do it. So hence, David will build it. Um, when we did the kitchen, we didn't have, David didn't do all of it because where I'm sat now, I would have been inside a big brick built pantry which has been knocked down. Uh, we had to have builders in to do that, obviously. Uh, but then David did everything else. But David will say, well, I'll and I will design it down to the, the last detail, but then I will get somebody to make it. I can't actually physically make it. I get my gist. Certain crafts we're going to do on the website. We're going to teach you how to do decoupaging um, and things like that. Because I've done some beautiful decoupage that we're going to put the videos direct to the website. So you'll like that one. That's good. So we've got any other questions? Yes, let me just go back. Uh, Samantha wants to know, will you be getting the pins you wear on your website? 
Right, I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and get uh, my friend Pearl that makes all uh, my pennies and everything. I will probably do a link to Pearl for you so you can contact her direct, okay? Um, because that's how Pearl makes her money. So I'm not going to buy them off Pearl and then restart selling them for more than she does. But you can get them directly from Pearl and I'll probably put a link to where they come from anyway. So that'll be quite easy. Anything else? Philip said he can't wait for his question, the question and answer on Sunday. That's Philip Sprasson. Spr yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm quite looking forward to it. It's a long time since I've actually been interviewed by somebody else. <coughs> We've done live chat shows in the last year or two, haven't we, on it, where you've asked the questions and I've had them written out that you've sent to me by email. But it's a long time since somebody's actually interviewed me. Like, I think the last time I was interviewed on television was, my word, uh, 10 years ago. I think it was 10 years ago nearly. Eight, nine years ago. Yeah, it was eight, nine years ago. And that was for the Travel Channel um, on Sky. And I was interviewed on that. I think that's on YouTube still, I think. Uh, so it's a long time since I've actually been interviewed on television. Um, and I know this isn't television, it's Facebook, but it's the same principle, somebody's actually asking me the question. So I'm just panicking on what to wear. The only thing is, the lucky thing is I'm not in a studio and I'm not being told I can't wear stripes and I can't wear anything too shimmery because it'll bounce off the light. So, so I can actually wear whatever I want. Might be a bit of actually. Thank you, Dot. Um, Kyle... And so, you Kyle, a uh, question, Kyle. Yes, we are opening the beer garden in April. I don't know. How, I don't know if it's going to work or not. But yeah, that's, who knows? that's the thing with with the business reopening. We can only open outside in April, um, and of course, British weather. So at the moment, David's looking into having the beer garden covered over and and you know canopied so that everything's dry outside and we'll heat it some way so it's warmer. Um, but you know we've got to work with what we've got until we're allowed to open fully which is um, May 17th of May is that it's opening May? inside yeah right so April we'll have to play it by ear and see how we go but we will be open in the beer garden yeah so I'll message you plus after plus we've got the front terrace as well the pub's got the front terrace outside as well Roxy Tomba Dry hi hi your mum she said hi Rox hi Roxy love I thought she was going to ask me something then. Do you know, Roxy, it feels forever since Roxy in Belfast. Oh, she said, love the hair, by the way. She said, it's gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Rox. I think it's a bit, do you not think it's a bit too long on me? I don't know whether I, I, I think I should have about four foot cut off it. I'm not used to really long hair, but Kyle, who does my hair, um, obviously is not doing it at the moment, has said he thinks it suits me longer. Miss Felicia said she thinks it should only be jaw length, a woman of a certain age and all that, carry on. So I'm not too sure, and I'm not used to wearing my hair long. It's either up or, you know, sort of here. So we'll see. We'll see whether it stays or not. So Roxy, by the way, is in a lovely Belfast. Um, I've not seen her. We usually meet up if I go to Belfast to do a show. Or we meet up when we're both in Benel Magna, because, of course, I live there for so long, we go home. And Roxy has a holiday home there, and we meet up there. And um, it wasn't last summer, because last summer, of course, we got locked down and my tour got cancelled. Three years? Was it three years? No, ago? it was the year before that. Was it? So it's two years. It'll be two years this summer, which is horrendous. Good afternoon, Russell. You're 40 minutes late. Yes, Russell. Where have you been, my darling? Good afternoon, Philip. Which Philip? Lawrence. Philip Lawrence. Good Jones. afternoon, Felipe, hey, darling. Samantha said that's brilliant. I'm get... About Pearl, that is. Because I'm, I'm way behind now. I'm trying to catch up. John Cross, I tell you from Belfast. We have, we have no date yet to start getting back to normal. No. It's, I think everything's so scattered, isn't it? And everybody's not... Even though we made those announcements, I think every, I think David and I had to run it back six times to sort of catch what he was saying. Because you only have to say one word and you've missed a part of it out. And then you get a load of crap that's on Facebook where people are actually dramatising a situation which drives me absolutely insane. I think the world's bad enough as it is. I mean, no, Samantha. people uh, dramatising it. What's she asking? Those case flowers next to you is amazing, she said. Oh, the flowers, the silk. Darling, they're not real. They will be available on the website as well. That's why they're all over the house. Um, as I said, anything that's in the house, it's not just stuff be sold there's plenty of shops that do that it will just be things i use okay. people are saying they suit you suit your hair long oh thank you yes yeah, so it's a bit scaremongery don't you think 
uh, with the, the this reopening and, and what we can do. What Kyle said, look at Joan and Raquel, they're 90. Yeah, but Joan is Joan is shoulder length. I only spoke to Joan, she's just gone back to LA, so I'm name dropping now. So I actually spoke to Joan uh, day before yesterday. I think it was day before yesterday because it was a wedding anniversary. So I always speak to her on her anniversary. I need to just get some sweeteners. Um, Dab under this camera, mate. You are, you're getting very good with that. Dab under this. I'll be redundant soon. Um, and Joan says, shoulder, it's jaw length, Kyle, like I used to have it. I just don't know whether it's a bit too long on me. You know. I mean, well, you've got to remember, I'm 31 now. Plus VAT. In dog years. I'm 31, so I can't um, overdo it. There are limitations, even though there's uh, obviously things being done. Kyle said, I can always send you a winner. Yeah, oh, I love a winner. You can't go wrong without a winner. Oh, you, you fell asleep, did you, Russell? Set your alarm next time, or you'll be blocked. <laughs> oh, I could never block my Russell. Stunning colour on those flowers, Kyle said. Yeah, they are nice, aren't they? It's a uh, teal and um, a teal and periwinkle, and I forgot what the lilac-y one's called. Um, uh, but it's uh, going to be a while yet before they. Hey, Lucy. Which Lucy? Who I used to work with. Hi, Lucy. She's been the one who's been to the pub. Her birthday. Yeah. I didn't know it was Lucy Elastic. VAT and tax, David Riley said. What's he mean by that? My age. Shut it. Oh, down. okay. Yeah, I'm with him. They'll talk. Oh, what? Riley, why are you not at work? Mm, flying off, are we? We're up to date now. So we're up to date with questions, that's good. Um, don't forget the, the quantities are, if you can watch the video back uh, once it's edited out, um, for the quantities for the breakfast scones. Oh, it's just finished. Or it's already on my page. Are you, Okay. I'll message you later, darling. I hope you're okay. So I can't think I've got anything else to tell you. So it's been like a madhouse, honestly. We had we had a horrendous, horrendous month uh, with personal things. And as as I said, during that, the house was like a building yard. And it was like a building yard. I mean, bricks were absolutely everywhere. It was horrific. David has worked just so hard. And I do mean so hard. It's been- Fanny, put day. it on again. I must have missed it, love. It's been all day from early morning, right through to six, seven in the evening. Um, and it's not stopped. Uh, but we, we, you know, we've got the drawing rooms finished, the studies finished, the kitchens finished. There's a few little tweaks I want to do here and there, um, and then we're now moving on to the other wing of the building. It makes me sound like I live in uh, Downton Abbey, doesn't it? The other wing, but there is another wing. It runs in a long corridor that goes through, so there's you know north end, south and all that carry on, um, and we're just working our way down that way now. Stephen, so, that's and then my next big job is having the bathrooms torn out, but. Go on, Stephen's asking what. Will your recipes be for, for sale? My recipes for sale? What? The, the actual product? Will they be for sale? I think, your recipes, I think. I don't know. No, the recipes are for free. Explain yourself. The recipes are for free. Stephen. Do you mean the actual product I bake? Will I be selling the product? No, I'm not. It's not a baking. There's plenty of people that are doing that. Um, I'm not actually selling the products. I'll teach you how to do them. Uh, the website has the cookery show on it as well, you see, because it's everything home. Uh, you know, it's Fox Home, so everything is, is to do with running a house and housewife and how to bake, how to cook, how to arrange vases of flowers, how to drape your curtains, how curtains should be, uh, the art of etiquette, how to lay a table. Um, you know, there is a right way, it teaches a right way and a wrong way to decorate a house. There is a right way and a wrong way. Be it your style or not, you know, I'm not trying to say to everybody, my style is your style. It's not everybody has their own style. Uh, but it, you would sort of the website would have to be your look to follow most of the things on it but most of the things on it are to teach you that you know there is a correct way and a wrong way of, of hanging a curtain or a drape it you know you don't just bang them up and that's it there is a correct way to steam them into place and all the rest of it um, and that just comes from years of being an interior designer and you know when I worked floor Ashley on Regent Street it was uh, there was shall we say some of the customers were um, difficult um, there was a lot of celebrities' houses that I decorated and went to their house that we're not allowed to say. Um, we're trying to look into whether I can. Um, because some of my work is in two or three books. So um, I want to know if I can actually use them because it's copyrighted. So I can't use copyrighted stuff. So I said, it, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way of doing everything. And that's, that's basically <coughs> what we're going at. Dot said, I, have an, I don't have an oven. 
would I be able to cook in an um, allergen cooker? Yes, those halogen things, Dot, they bake amazingly, absolutely amazingly. And you know, the other thing that does bake well, um, which I've not got anymore because I threw mine away because I just, kitchen equipment drives me mad. I have a mixer and a food processor and a steamer, an electric steamer. They're the only things I have. I don't have uh, millions of electrical appliances anymore. I used to have cupboards full. Do you remember when everybody did it in the 70s and we all had... Uh, sandwich toasters and this one and that one and oh, in the end it was ridiculous you had an appliance for doing everything um, but what I did discover when I had an air fryer if you remove the basket from the air fryer where you would put the food and then foil it and put the baking inside it it bakes scones absolutely amazing and to be truthful I'm sorry I threw the air fryer away now because I couldn't do the demo and I had to do it and it was the most the reason I learned how to do it, we were having a kitchen done and all the, the cookers and everything were out. There was no cooker, nothing. And I needed to bake quickly. And I thought, oh, I'll just use the air fryer. It, it, you know, it bakes a potato. Surely it will bake that. So I tested it and it did. So uh, if you have a plate with your air fryer, it does work. But don't put it in the, the basket that you put french fries in or it's going to just run through it, you know. Fanny said, I don't really want to mm. read this mm. out. If you run out of cream of tartar, can you... Get... Can you get Wayne's teeth to? Can you get Wayne to scrape his teeth and use that? Only with a butter knife. Oh God! But you must have a butter knife, Fan. It's my lovely friend Fanny. Hello, Fan. Oh, so, Stephen said not the product. Thought he would ask on about the recipes. Oh no, the recipes, the, the, the recipes. None of the recipes are <coughs> printed out. You've got to watch the video and write it down as I'm doing it. It would be basically like watching. I don't know, on this morning when James Martin cooks, the gorgeous James Martin, I must say, uh, when he cooks, he's telling you. I know they put them on the website as well, but mine, you will have to follow the recipe and I will tell you each thing on it. I tell you how many ounces or how many cups or... And as I keep saying with the recipes, follow it to the letter. Don't say, oh, well, I've not got that product, so it's not going to work. It, it'll work without it. It won't. Everything in it is an old saying, no, cooking is an art form. Baking is a science. Everything has to be exact. What are you giggling at now? What someone just said now? Uh, Dot said thank you for that great stuff. And then easiest put, can you do a video for Mike and Jamie of how to light a coal fire? <laughs> well, I could do, couldn't I? This is, this is um, two friends of mine have just bought a new house and they've got a, a log burner and um, they haven't got a clue properly how to light a coal fire. So I, I think it's an age thing, but um, you know, get a good drawer on that now, look. And um, I had to teach them actually how to light a coal fire. Uh, the young don't know how to light a coal fire. They, they, they get buy a log burner and they know how to put stupid stuff on it that just sets fire to a log. And they, what they don't realise is those log burners are costing the earth to buy those logs because the wood just burns away. They won't listen. Get a good sack of young smoke kids. Free they won't coal, listen. But they have to be taught to actually light a fire. And she finds that hysterically easier that I'm like a proper old nana that I can light a fire, fire and get a good draw going on it. Make a blow of a newspaper and the shovel trapped up against it. Marvellous. Fanny said, no, not a knife. <laughs> no. Oh God, no, no knives. Knives are all, all confiscated now, knives. All taken away, spoons only. I'm glad you cheered, we cheered you up, Stephen. Miss you both always. Were well, you feeling Seem a bit down, up. Stephen? It's, I think everybody's found it really hard. I really do. I think <coughs> I think people have found this lockdown harder than the first one, to be honest and truthful. Um, a lot of my friends have. They've found <coughs> it a lot harder. For me, it doesn't make a jot of difference whatsoever because, you know, I'm a, I'm a part-time shutting anyway. I actually only go out of the house if I physically need to go out of the house. You know, shopping, grocery shopping, the post office for a stamp, something like that. I, it would never cross my mind to think... I know what I'll do. I'll just go out for a little walk. For what reason? I can't get my head around that way. My dad used to love to do that, just go for a walk. It's called exercise. Can't be bothered. The only reason I think to go out walking is to walk around a department store. You know? But other than that, I don't see the point. I think it's an absolute waste of time and effort. Hi, Alex. Alex is watching from the New York. Hi, Alex. How are you, love? Lovely to see you. Yeah, Stephen's a bit down. Just a bit, he said. Well, it is. I think the first lockdown, everybody sort of uh, plodded on with it, didn't they, and got used to it. Um, and then the second one came, and this one was the first Since one. Since October. 
So we've been locked down since so October, November, December, January, February. Yeah, going into March. By the time April. Is, April. We've got nearly six months, isn't it? It's going to be six months, isn't it? So it is, it's double the length of time. So it has been a lot harder, I think, for people. Miss um, Ross is watching. Hi, Miss Ross. How are you, my darling? Can't wait, wait to get back to London to do a show. Really can That's the biggest thing I've missed. I have not actually been on stage now for over a year. Thanks for watching, Sue. Sue in Spain. She's got to go. See you later, Sue. Um, it's a year since I've been stood on a stage and I can't, you know, I, 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 that is the hardest thing. And when I first didn't do it, I was, at the time, I'd slowed down buying the pub. We'd, we'd slowed down so I wasn't touring as much and I wasn't up and down the country as much. And I thought, oh, great. But I was still doing outside shows here and there. And I thought, oh, I could cope with this retirement. Lovely. No. No, I cannot cope not being on the stage. It's driving me insane. That is the only thing that's driving me insane. So other than that being in the house, that doesn't bother me in the least. Uh, but not being on stage just drove me to madness. Dean, said, Dean said he's now at the stage of just wake me up when it's all over. Yeah, well, I think, I think most people is. are. Uh, but I think that's what, I, I, this is the thing with a lot of my friends <coughs> in the industry and actors and actresses and... Uh, friends of mine, a stage crew and camera people and lighting rig people and all this. Uh, my industry has gone into the toilet and it's just horrendous because there is no alternative. We've got to just sit and wait and God knows when we're going to be able to. They've not mentioned, they've said we can open. Have they said we can do live cabaret yet? This we don't know. So we've got to, we've got to sit and wait. Because everything's still, I think, so up in the air. You know, if they're saying... June. Well, they're reviewing it every five weeks, aren't they? They have to look at the numbers if, if and things like that. that. Is, is it June that they said everything's going to be open and running? June the twenty-first, we should be back to normal. Well, if it's Not June the twenty-first, everything's back to normal. On the night of June the twenty-first, I will be on stage in this bar with a full show. We won't. We'll be in Blackpool. So, oh no, I won't be. I'll be on holiday. <laughs> so, um, but you know, it's whatever. But that weekend, I will be on stage. Put it that way. Um, and you know I can't have I can't have my acts that work here my lovely DJs lovely Miss Melanie you know I can't have her here they, they've got no income it's, it's it's terrible absolutely terrible it really is afternoon Marilyn hi Marilyn how are you love how are you Tiffany hi Tiff how are you doing love Philip said he misses misses performing Philip Sprasson yeah I do I miss performing I miss when I did the live shows last year, they were okay. Um, <clears throat> it was like working in a television studio with no feedback. And my show, I need that audience to be there. Even when I work in the theatre, I ask for the house lights to go up because I like to see people's faces. I want to see the breath when it's cold coming out the nose. I like that. I don't like to be shielded away. That's why television was never really my thing uh, as a performer. I just didn't like it. I like a full-on live audience. You're fine, Dot. <laughs> I'll start saying that. Shit, I'm quite used to it this way now. I think when, when the weather is so miserable, it can affect some people. Maybe that's why things are not too bad last year as we, nice because we had a nice summer. I think that was it. I think last year, the, the lot is down during the middle of summer, uh, which wasn't good financially, but because um, I lost a whole summer season. But... Um, it, we had that fact that we could sit outside, everybody was set in the garden, uh, you know, people did the garden, people found things to do outside and barbecue and, you know, God knows whatever else. Uh, this time, it's been the middle of winter and it's been, the run up to Christmas I thought was okay because you had all that going on and everybody was thinking about how they were going to shop without the shops open and getting things to be bought online and decorating your house and planning Christmas dinners and how many people you could have there and all the rest of it. And of course, as soon as Christmas comes over, I think it's a hideous part type, time of the year anyway. I always think Christmas to Easter is my most hatred time of the year, hatred. And always, always in that period of time, I lose somebody. Somebody either passes away, somebody dies, some hideous accident happens, always. And it has all come, and I've proved it again this year, it's same things happen. And with the lockdown, it's made it worse. It really has made it worse. Because you're not there to console each other. Dean said the minute we're out, Jackie will be zipping up her cocktail slacks and making her way down to the George Tavern 42 George Street. Oh, I hope you're coming with her if you can stand the journey with her, Dean. <laughs> Jackie G's spot? Yeah. Oh, Jackie will be here. She'll be in a cocktail slacks. Practice. She'll be practising now, I'd say. It's my lovely Jackie G spot friend. Uh, she lives up there in Scotland. 
We should all hook her that hangs about the bins at the garbles, but you know, we don't talk about that much anymore. Clive, yeah, we've both had our vaccine. Yeah, we had our first, first vaccine. One. David had not one side effect. I was mortally ill for two days. It gave me every side effect it's supposed to do um, of like feeling like you've got the flu without the, the, the symptoms of flu. But I was I had the achy, I was shaking, I was cold, I was sweating. It was horrendous. I was laying in bed with an electric blanket wrapped around me and everything. Um, and it just lasted, I don't, not a full 48 hours, but near as damn it. Uh, but now I feel cool, feel great, you know. Good to hear, Marilyn. Well, you know, I am one. I know there's a lot of people sceptical. A few of my friends are refusing to have the vaccine. Um, I'm one of those people I've always believed in vaccinations and I don't care how long it's been tested for. To me, if they said that get this enamel bucket, smash it to pieces and start to eat in an enamel bucket and life will go back to normality, then I'll do it. That I, I really will do anything. Because, you know, people can't live like this forever. It, it would drive everybody to absolutely insanity. It really will. I mean, no wonder the mental health thing's going up. What else? Do we have anything else? Or are we... I guess, David, well, late to the party, welcome back. Hi, Haggis. You are late, we're finishing now. I'm nearly at the end of the show, my darling. Miss Mel's got your kitchen island, Fanny said. <laughs> oh, she'll have it in by now. we all built by now, Fan. So, we are going to wind that up. I will recap uh, the breakfast scones, the watch the recipe uh, live again when this goes out as a recording. It will also then transfer to my new website, which launches at the end of this week. Not fully, only partially. Um, but the website will be uh, will be advertised on my Facebook page. Um, the quantities for today's recipe are still on my Facebook page, and I'll leave them there for at least another day. Okay. Then I do delete the post because it ties up the page with too much crap. Thanks, Stephen. Um, don't forget to join me this Sunday. Um, I'm being interviewed um, live via Facebook by two fabulous queens from down south that have interviewed sort of every drag queen on the face of the earth um, of a certain age. My lovely friend David Dale was live last week on it and I'm being interviewed this week, so I'm looking forward to that. The link to that chat show is on my page. If you go to my page, you will see the link. Click the link, go to it and click like. And obviously I think then you get a notification. You're able to ask me questions as well. It, the questions go via them to via me and it's multiple screen. I don't know what you call that. But you can Zoom. see- you can, Is that what you call it? You can see me and you can see them. So yeah, is that Zoom? Zoom? Yeah. Okay, is that like I did the other day when I had to do that meeting? Yeah. That's Zoom, yeah. Because I, see, I just call that an online meeting. Because with the new website, I've, done, I've been doing online meetings with people. So, um, I just call it an online meeting. I'm so out of it with technicalities. So we're going to wind up everything. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thank you for your lovely compliments about the kitchen. Thank you to my lovely David for filming me. Thank you for all your kind thoughts over the last month. I know I put it on Facebook, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was, every message was read, everyone, and there was hundreds. And you know, the people that took the time to message me was so so lovely of you it really was thank you for the literally dozens of bouquets of flowers the the cards the, the stuff that are out it was just mind-blowing I, I felt so loved and thank you so much for those that didn't bother mm. but thank to the rest of you thank you so much and thank you for joining us today so we will say ta and i will see you live on sunday via the link on my page and then i will be back next week with another cookery show so from me and David, see you all later. Try, say try, David. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Ciao.